All right, got the high sign. So I'm an MD-PhD candidate at Mayo, and I'm in the Radiology Informatics Laboratory. There's several different labs at Mayo that uh, do biomedical imaging in different, uh, different ways, shapes, and forms. And uh, up until about 2009, 2010, most of them used MATLAB. Um, so the first thing I'm going to talk about here is, is evaluating scientific software and potential options for medical image analysis outside MATLAB, and I'll go into why we wanted to consider other options. Um, in just a second. Then I'll talk a little bit about one of the things that I developed early on, which is that I, I felt the need for a way to quickly visualize volumes um, <coughs> with something like an IM show, but, but for volumes, and uh, to see what, to get in, more or less instantaneous feedback about what I was uh, doing. And of course, this is developed in like 2009 or 2010. There are other options now. Um, I'm not sure that mine is superior, but uh, I'll just tell you about my experience. And then a little bit, a few comments about medical data sets, which are often uh, acquired volumetrically, but the spacing in each spatial dimension is not equal uh, to the spacing in each other spatial dimension. And so if everything is equal, it's like a Rubik's cube, it's, uh, it's a cubic data set, uh, or isotropic is the real term to use. But then when they're not, it's an anisotropic data set, and that means there's some different assumptions that have to be made if you want to do everything quite right and quantitatively so in the actual metrics and analysis. So first, uh, scientific imaging software review. So the first thing that I did when I came into the lab, actually in 2009, not 2000, sorry, yeah, not 2010, um, the, the, um, the realization had been made that students were basically wasting time repeatedly solving problems in different languages. So someone else comes in and they got their own pet language and they really want to work in that language and they think they, they can really, you know, do all sorts of amazing things with that language, but they don't know how to actually understand a lot of data formats. So they're redoing the input-output. So then someone else maybe comes in and they do a language that we have some of the input-output. They write some more code, amazing analysis code, and now it's stuck in that language. Uh, and it just the interoperability was becoming a problem. Um, and so, and also there's the idea that we should have this sort of growing internal lab code base, sort of like the scikits and, and the external thing, but also but internally to the lab, and that just wasn't happening. Um, but the real impetus for moving away from MATLAB, and MATLAB has its place. I will fully acknowledge that, and there's a lot of people at Mayo that still use MATLAB. There's over 100 site, uh, individual licenses that, that Mayo has for MATLAB all the time. But the reason that we moved away from it is because right about then we were looking at to really start parallelizing stuff, and uh, we didn't have the GPU toolkits that we do now, um, and so we looked at their, uh, we spin up about 32 or 64 cluster uh, nodes in a cluster, and we suddenly realized that, oh yeah, MATLAB's licensed per node, or per, yeah, per core. And of course now we've got multi-core processors coming out, and like a third of the institution's MATLAB licenses were getting pulled by our core. <clears throat> and that wasn't really viewed as a sustainable thing, and so that was the main impetus, along with the rest that I just mentioned, of sort of looking at alternate options. Now, the, uh, the goals, and I was just tasked with, okay, look at see what's out there. And uh, we needed the ability to have robust and dimensional arrays. People coming in have, will have been exposed to MATLAB, and so without having that capability, you're going to have problems. Um, we also wanted a strong user community so that we wouldn't uh, die out over time. Uh, and it needed to be fairly easy for students to transition from other languages, because the idea is if you come into our lab, you will effectively, uh, even though there would be an initial period of adjustment, It'll be better for everyone, both past, present, and future, if we have a, a standard base to talk to each other within. Um, then we preferred open source and, of course, scalable, and that's the, just what I just mentioned. With that, we were really, the, the ones that made the final cut are probably no surprise to most of the people in this room. Python, obviously, among them. Uh, there was some people that were working in Java and Groovy. There's one uh, set of people that really love to package um, C code up in Lua, and uh, then there's, the ubiquitous Fortran, that's what practically all of science seemed to be used to be written in. Um, and of those, Python came out as pretty much the clear winner. And I was, okay, so 2009 got onto this slide, but not propagated to the rest. Um, and I don't have any other things to say about that, except that we have no regrets whatsoever and have moved forward, and it's been a, uh, the absolute right decision for us. Um, Okay, so then, just for me personally, I needed a way to have simple feedback to visualize what was happening. A big part of my thesis involves segmentations. So if you've got a volume, let's say 512 by 512 by 64, and you want to analyze and have an idea of how well your algorithm is doing to segmenting each individual little pixel in there, you can't really just do it with a three-dimensional um, volume rendering, because that's wonderful, but, uh, but to, 
to, you really need to almost have an overlay on every slice. And so if you did something like this, where you're generating a, a loads of different figures, that's you know really impractical. You just too many windows. Um, and at the time that it was this, and Maya View was still available, but uh, but was more uh, optimized for the 3D stuff. So. Of course, radiologists often will just page through a stack of 2D images. Now, you could maybe do this with plot.draw, but of course, I was using OSX at the time. The QT backend was the only one that was stable. It blocks, so you can't use the draw. Um, and so I just uh, started looking at other options. And what I came up with was a tool called Volview. And, uh, and the idea was to take the ray data from NumPy, uh, use pig ray images, pig array image, which is a buffer transfer to take the NumPy data and pipe it over to OpenGL textures, and then use Piglet, which is actually a game library, um, to quickly handle those OpenGL tex textures and, uh, and a really, really minimal GUI. Because again, the point was basically to have something that you could have in a one-liner and basically get direct feedback. Um, and, uh, and I wanted all alpha blended overlays so you could see, what you, see what's going on. This is nothing necessarily or shattering, but, uh, but it was potentially a little bit more relevant back in 2010. I'll turn on mirroring here so I can see what's going on as well as you. Um, and here we have an IPython notebook, surprise, surprise. Um, all right, so we also have fun tools nowadays like Kneebabel. So this is actually a, a data set from Kneebabel. And the, uh, the point is, well, I've gone through most of this. Uh, nowadays, you might use something like scikit-image.viewer, which if you were here just a few minutes ago, Tony presented in a lightning talk. It's a fantastic and evolving piece of software that I would recommend over this. Um, <coughs> or uh, Python microscopy was very interesting earlier today and had what looked like a fantastic GUI associated with it. But for, for quick use, um, it doesn't get much more, much simpler than just passing a single volume in And that's what I expected because it really does not like, it's an OpenGL issue based on OpenGL context. Um, doesn't like multiple. There we go. So as you can see, it's just a really quick uh, way to blit a whole bunch of textures up here. And there's been obviously some normalization um, that's gone in to display it on an 8-bit system instead. Um, you can also, all right, so then you just close it. It blocks execution. It's pretty much just like IM show, but for volumes. Um, so now you could do some processing, maybe with scikit image in here. But, uh, but I'm not going to do that for the demo because I was already worried about stuff working. So instead, we'll just keep it simple. And uh, just did a little bit of really naive thresholding, but you can see here we have an alpha blended overlay or two alpha blended overlays. And the only things that was needed for that was just to pass the binary um, volumes, which is the same size as the original, in as an overlays keyword argument. And then also uh, which colors you preferred, which can be either strings or there's a, uh, you can pass an RGB tuple. And then which, uh, how, what you want opacity bias or the transparency. And, uh, and this has literally saved me hundreds of hours of time. I don't really know how I would do the work that I do without having access to something. That basically was quick and dirty volume um, visualization with alpha blended overlay. Uh, limitations, and there are significant ones, is that it right now expects the in-plane images to be square, which isn't so much of a limitation in medical imaging, but is worth noting. Um, everything's scaled to 512 by 512. The window size is 600 by 600. Uh, the overlays are solid color, but you can have them uh, intensity variant. It doesn't have to be binary, but they are going to be a solid color. I don't have a color map support at the time. And it's pretty much uh, just a one-way visualization tool. It's not a whole GUI. It serves its purpose, and that's it. But it's been a wonderful tool for me personally uh, in my work. So let's go back here and talk a little bit about the realities of data. So perfect data that would be perhaps isotropic is the best described data by NumPy because NumPy does not make inherent assumptions about that and you've got a, a wonderful array that can be n-dimensional but, uh, but it doesn't say anything about the spacing between dimensions. So there's a lot of operations that then inherently assume the equal spacing each spatial dimension here for speed or um, just because they inherently assume that. Um, 
to get around this, several app algorithms, and for example, SciPy.nd image, they expose a keyword argument called sampling, uh, and then you can tell it uh, what the spacing is in between things to do that. But not all of them do. There's a couple notable um, exceptions. The Laplacian doesn't, and neither does. I had one other example on the top of my head, forgetting it, but uh, there's a couple that don't. The point is it's not actually all that hard to relax this assumption, and so if you're developing and, uh, and working with 3D data, try and at least think about this, because usually there's only one or maybe two places in a given algorithm that are actually um, making this kind of inherent assumption, and it might be really easy to relax that with a keyword argument. Um, so, for example, a lot of algorithms which will create, uh, calculate gradients in some way, shape, or form in each spatial dimension. and uh, Maybe they just call mp.gradient and that's it and they're done. But it turns out you can also have, uh, this supports a spacing argument for each dimension uh, with a variable length argument after that. Uh, but not every, it's just not always done. So with fairly minor changes, you can implement this. And uh, in a couple cases, I have uh, gone down that road myself. So for example, the random walker uh, segmentation in scikit image up till about a year ago, year and a half ago, it assumed isot isotropy in the gradient calculation. Um, and it, you, it did that not with uh, numpy gradients, but with a, uh, with a helper function here. And, uh, and so the fix was, was very simple. Just add a keyword argument, pass it through until you get to the actual gradient calculation, apply the correction, which is just divide by um, the spacing in each spatial dimension. And, uh, and then the rest of the algorithm is, is the same. It was very simple to actually make that fix. And it makes the, the world of difference when you're dealing with isotropic, or rather anisotropic data. Uh, you get correct results instead of incorrect results. Um, so, and then, and then I contribute those changes back to the community um, and have become more active in scikit image since that time, uh, which has been really a wonderful community. So just uh, to wrap everything up, in hindsight, Python was definitely the right choice for us in our lab at Mayo. There's other labs that still use MATLAB for prototyping, but we, we love Python. We're trying to convert and evangelize a little bit around the place. Um, <coughs> the, uh, the batteries included for many scientific libraries is wonderful. Some tools already include uh, support for anisotropic data, uh, which of course NumPy doesn't include, doesn't have by default, there's, there's no parameter for this. Um, others don't yet, but usually it's not hard. I've got uh, some of my efforts has, has been in uh, relaxing these assumptions across the different uh, Python libraries. And uh, just real quick, I have to acknowledge the people that I work with, uh, Mayo Clinic, various departments, and the NIDK tells me if I don't put this up there, I'm in trouble. So uh, very, very huge thanks to the NIDK and the NIH for the support that they've given me. So with that, I'd be happy to answer your questions. That's right. I was curious if you Yes, that is currently still the goal. Um, my mentor is an MD-PhD as well. He's a radiologist. Um, and the idea for me is to follow in similar footsteps. Um, that's not him speaking, that's me speaking. Uh, I chose him rather than the other way around. Anyway, um, the, the value of having both degrees is basically asking the right questions in your research. And, uh, and so I wouldn't have to practice 50% of the time in order to still have that relevance, inherent relevance to the question I would be asking. But yes, that is the goal. Anything else? Thanks, guys.